The brief, brief background of myself is predominantly family upbringing agnostic with Christian overtones. Agnostic in the sense that God was indirectly referred to, but really seen as being too far or too distant or unknowable, unknowable to you or in your life. And really the Christian overtones were simply coming from school education with uh, scripture lessons or family gatherings at weddings or funerals in churches. This is when I started to work at a school at Greystones. It was a, an intensive English centre for students uh, first coming into the country, refugees. And it was their exposure to Australia and the Australian education system. And I found these Muslim students to be very different from the limited exposure at that point in time that I'd had to other students teaching them. There was, they were polite, they were well-mannered, eager to learn. They didn't see school as an imposition. They were keen. The older boys, particularly uh, the older Afghani boys, they seemed to take a bit of an interest in me and um, asked me lots of questions about, you know, what did I believe? You know, was I a Christian, a non-believer, this, that? Always questioning me. And so I just thought, out of curiosity, I thought, OK, I'll, I'll see what this Islam is, just, just for my own knowledge, nothing, nothing more than this. So I borrowed a copy of the Qur'an from one of the, the brothers. And I was surprised with what I read. I suppose I didn't really have any ideas in my mind because I'd never really investigated Islam before. But the thing that I remember sticking out to me was the names of the prophets. These were something familiar, very familiar to me. And um, what I found out to be later, the core tenet about one God only. This is who you turn to, this is who you ask, this is who provides. This was very rational, very sensible, very accessible for me. And so I thought, well, I don't know, maybe I'd taken a bit of a bait or something like this. I, I wanted to find out more. Still, just, just curious, but my curiosity was growing. So I, I contacted this, I got a number of this Afghani man who was told to be knowledgeable and ask him, his English is good, have a talk with him. So I, I made an appointment with him to talk to him at the, the big masjid at Auburn there and I met him, with, met him there one evening. And I can still remember the feeling when I was waiting outside, just getting ready to go in. I don't know, I wasn't nervous, uh, I wasn't anxious. I don't know, it was, I was just I'm feeling a compulsion to, to do this. And he sat with me a long time that, that afternoon and evening, uh, ask, answering my questions, explaining concepts in Islam to me, many, many different things. And um, I'm very grateful to this brother for all this uh, information and assistance he gave me, because I was able to meet with him a number of times after that. And he explained that to me that in order to be a Muslim, it's quite simple. Just to say the Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And he said to me that this is the beginning. It's the start, it's not the end. There is more, but it's as simple as this. So I decided, I said to him, yes, I'm ready for this. Something, something clicked, it was simple, it was straightforward for me. And I can still remember this afternoon, the afternoon when I met him at his house and we were going off to this um, Saturday evening class that he had at the Blacktown Masjid with some Afghani brothers there and um, you know, he just sat me down and said, you know, you sure this is what you want to do? You're, you understand everything here so that I was un he wanted to make sure that I was under no misapprehensions whatsoever. I said to him, yeah, yeah I'm sure. And a funny thing happened on the way. He was going to pick up another elder of the community. And I had hardly time to walk through the door of this elder's house when I was rained with these sweets and chocolates and he's kissing me and grabbing me and hugging me and I had no idea who this old man was. <laughs> and it sort of scared me initially and I really didn't have the nerve to ask probably until about two or three years later, what was this, you know? What was it that hit me, these lollies and the hugs and the kisses and whatnot? And I got told, no, no, don't worry, this is just something from our own culture. They're very, very happy and pleased that you've done something big and great. But at the time, I, I couldn't understand what he was saying. I, it was a big shock. And when we got to the masjid, once again, it was all very simple, very straightforward. Recite the shahada publicly in front of Muslims. This is it. You're a Muslim. I haven't had much opportunity to meet many other reverts, but I think one of the more interesting ones I think I have met was this uh, Vietnamese brother one evening at, at the masjid. He was just sitting there, very quiet, very unassuming. I started to talk with him and he told me that he was previously a professional kickboxer. I thought, well, oh, okay, this is 
I'll just be very, very nice to you and talk very politely. Yeah. <laughs> he, he seemed so quiet and I, I wouldn't have ever guessed this from him. And we saw the same thing, you know, how did you come to Islam, how did you come to Islam, this, that. And he was telling me that before when he wasn't a Muslim, he was, um, in his big major professional bout, he was in. And he, after the bout he finished and he lost and it was this um, Afghani brother he fought, another professional kickboxer. And he was commenting to him, you know, how his skill was and his endurance in the fight and this, that. And the brother said to him simply, it's not me, it's just something from Allah. And this really apparently has just shocked him. Because I think the impression he had before was most other fighters really said, you know, it's, it's all me, it's all my skill, it's all this. And apparently that's what led him to investigate further. But in conclusion, to any, any of the guests, if we have any, or if you can advise your non-Muslim friends that if they're really interested in Islam, don't judge Islam by the Muslims. Look and investigate Islam. Keep your mind and your heart open. Keep it sincere. Read about Islam from reputable sources, not just from anywhere. And don't delay. If the inclination is there and you feel it, go, because Allah might never give this opportunity to you again. There's no guarantee. And also, when they embrace Islam, be there for them. Or direct them on to people who can give them a, a community that they can link on to and be comfortable with, who they can ask questions to, socialise with, do all these sort of things, so they feel comfortable, because they're developing a new Islamic identity and their man is slowly growing.